Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio. So today I am bringing you part two of my How to Learn to Play the Pokemon Trading Card Game video. Now, in the last video, we looked at what Pokemon cards were. We looked at the general thing whereby... You have a basic Pokemon, you attach energy, you do attacks, you try and do enough attacks to add up to greater than or equal to the HP of the opposing active Pokemon, bench Pokemon, evolving, etc, etc. Go back and watch that if you haven't, there is a link in the description. Here we are knocking things up a notch and we're looking at things which can give you an edge in the game rather than just attaching energy and attacking. First of all, we should start with trainer cards. Now there are three different types of trainer cards. There are items, stadiums, and supporters. And they all do roughly the same thing. They do extra things to give you an edge. So, supported cards can only be played once per turn. You can play one supporter card of any description and then you are not allowed to play another supporter until your following turn. Common examples of this would be Professor Sycamore, which allows you to discard every card in your hand and draw a new hand of seven cards and this is useful because you get more cards you draw more Pokemon you draw more energy you get to set up and do more and greater attacks another common supporter card is Lysander and this allows you to pick one of your opponents bench Pokemon whichever one you like and switch it with your opponents active Pokemon so if you're in a position where you're unable to KO your opponents active Pokemon or your opponent is building up a Pokemon, attaching lots of energy on the bench, and you're thinking, oh, if he gets that Pokemon out, I'm going to lose, you can use Lysander to drag it into the active early and KO it. Stadium cards can be used by either player, and these can be either active or passive. So, for instance, if we look at the example of Skyfield, this is a passive stadium card. It just says both players can have eight bench spots. So instead of the usual five bench spaces, you play Skyfield and you can now have more bench Pokemon. And a card like Raichu that we saw in the first video that does more damage based on how many bench Pokemon you have, you can see why Raichu might want to play this. Or you can play a card like Scorched Earth. This is what I would call an active stadium. If it just sits there, it does nothing, but you can choose to discard a fire or a fighting energy and draw two cards. Thing about stadiums is both players can get to use the stadium when it's out, so you have to make sure you're not giving your opponent an advantage. In terms of the playing area, stadiums just sit in the middle, just off to the side, between both players' sides of the field. And then we have item cards, and item cards do a variety of things, and you can play as many as you like during your turn. Now, an item card could be something like Switch. I told you in the previous video about retreating and having to discard energy to pay the retreat cost. Well, you could play Switch, and it allows you to, and this might shock you, switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench without having to pay the retreat cost. Or you could play something like a Super Rod, which allows you to shuffle free in any combination of Pokemon and basic energy into your deck. So if you've had a Pokemon knocked out and you want to use it again, you can use Super Rod to put it back into your deck, and then you might draw into it later. Or you can put energy back in your deck so you don't run out of energy and find yourself unable to attack. There are literally hundreds of different kinds of trainer cards which you will encounter as you get used to playing the game. All you need to know for now, supporters one per turn, Stadiums, there can only be one out at a time. You cannot play more than one stadium on your turn, and you cannot play a stadium that has the same name as a stadium that is already on the field, i.e. you can't play a Skyfield if there's already a Skyfield out. There are also, if you're looking at item cards that you can play as many as you like per turn, there are also tools that you attach to your Pokemon. One common example is a Fighting Fury Belt. You attach it to a Pokemon, and if that Pokemon is basic, its hit points go up by 4, and all of its attacks do 10 more damage or float stone that you attach to a Pokemon and then it has no retreat cost and can retreat without discarding any energy. I briefly mentioned special energy a moment ago. Basic energy are just your standard energy. Special energy are something a bit different, like double colorless that counts as two colorless energy. So Raichu could use this as one card to use his attack. 
and strong energy, which is an energy which can only be attached to fighting Pokemon, but does an extra 20 damage for all of your attacks. Similar to trainer cards, we also have abilities, and these are printed on Pokemon as well as their attacks, and these can also be active or passive. So for instance, one very commonly used one is Shaman EX. When you put Shaman on the field as a benched Pokemon, when you play him to your bench, you can draw until you have six cards in your hand. You've got one card, you get to draw an extra five. Whereas something like a Garbodor has a passive ability, it's always there, you don't have to do anything. And Garbodor says, ha ha ha, nobody but me has an ability. So if you've got a Garbodor on the field saying, boom, no one has abilities, your opponents cannot use Shaman Setup ability, because Garbodor's saying, no abilities for you. And very similar to abilities, some Pokemon, very few but some, have ancient traits, which are basically like abilities with a different name. So, for instance, you have a Torchic that has the Omega Barrage ancient trait, which allows Torchic to attack twice. All of these cards, whether they are trainer cards or abilities or ancient traits, you just need to read what they do and then follow it. As always, if you have any problems, speak to somebody who knows or leave a comment in the comment section and I will try and get back to as many as I can. Now at the moment, we also have EX Pokemon. These are very powerful basic Pokemon that generally have better attacks and better abilities, but when they get KO'd, they give up two prizes. It's a risk reward thing, ladies and gentlemen better cards, but when they get KO'd, you give up two prizes rather than one. And there are also two special evolutions you should be aware of. These are Break Evolutions and Mega Evolutions. And again, these are just regular evolutions. If you've got a Zanaeus out, you can Break Evolve and just put a Zanaeus Break over the top. Same rules apply as always in that you've got to have had your Pokemon down for a turn before you can break Evolve. The difference with Break Evolutions, it is a card you add to the original card, so you've still got the same attacks and abilities you had before you evolved, after you've evolved. Whereas if you evolve a Pikachu to a Raichu, you lose all of Pikachu's attacks. But if you evolve a Zanaeus to a Zanaeus Break, you keep the attacks for both Zanaeus and Zanaeus Break. Mega EXs are special evolutions that only work for EX Pokemon. And you still give up two prizes when you get KO'd, but you have to end your turn when you evolve. So, for instance, you might evolve your Rayquaza into a Mega Rayquaza. You gain a fancy new attack. Like a regular evolution, you now lose all the attacks on Rayquaza EX, and you only have the attacks for Mega Rayquaza. But you have to end your turn in order to do so. The good news is for more recent Mega EXs, there are Spirit Link tool cards that you attach to the EX. And as long as you have a Spirit Link attached to the EX, you can Mega Evolve and your turn does not end. The last thing we'll talk about in this video is status conditions. Now, there are certain attacks that inflict what we refer to as status conditions. So, for instance, if we look at this Froakie card, he has an attack called Bubble. When you attack, you flip a coin, and if that coin lands on heads, then your opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed. So, let's go through the different status conditions we have. First of all, Paralysis. Paralysis means that the Pokemon who is paralyzed cannot attack and cannot retreat for one turn. At the end of your turn, your paralyzed active Pokemon automatically becomes unparalyzed. You cannot attack or retreat, but you could, for instance, play a Switch to get your Pokemon out of the active position, and as soon as your Pokemon goes to the bench, he is no longer paralyzed. We also have Poison. Any Pokemon that is poisoned takes 10 damage between turns. So after your turn, it takes 10 damage. After your opponent's turn, it takes 10 damage, and so on and so on. Again, if you put your Pokemon on the bench from the active, it is no longer poisoned. That's retreating or using a trainer card to get it out of the active. We also have sleep. 
If a Pokemon is asleep, then you flip a coin between turns. After your turn, after your opponent's turn, etc. Every time somebody's turn ends, yours or your opponent's, you flip a coin. If heads, your Pokemon wakes up. If tails, your Pokemon stays asleep. When it is asleep, it is like it is paralyzed. No attacking, no retreating. You just sit in the active unless you can play a card to get it out of the active position. We also have confusion. If a Pokemon is confused, then you flip a coin if you try and attack. If you flip a heads, heads is always good in the Pokemon trading card game, then your attack happens and it's good. If you flip a tails, your attack does nothing and you take 30 damage. Essentially, your Pokemon does 30 damage to itself, your attack fails and your turn ends. As with all status conditions, going to the bench will get rid of confusion and you are allowed to retreat if you're confused. And finally, we have burn. Burn says that you flip a coin between turns, after your opponent's turn, after your turn, after everybody ends their turn, you flip a coin. If heads, nothing happens. If tails, you take 20 damage. And of course, once you go to the bench or get KO'd, the burn goes away. I hope that made sense, ladies and gentlemen. I hope I have now explained all the key concepts of the Pokemon trading card game. You know the deal. There's a comment section. Use it. There's a like button. Use it. There's a subscribe button. Use it. I hope some of you that have watched these videos are newer players who are now going to go out and play the Pokemon trading card game. I am not in any way paid to advertise this, but Pokemon do make theme decks, and the way I generally teach people to play, go and buy two different theme decks available in pretty much any toy shop and just literally start playing a game let me know if you need any more help that's what the comment section is there for thank you very much for watching my name is ross and you've been watching ptcg radio